Dr. Art Kaplan is with us. Dr. Arthur Kaplan, professor at uh, New York University's Langone Medical Center. His website, pophealth.med.nyu.edu. And, of course, there's a link to that off tomhartman.com. And Twitter, at Arthur Kaplan, C-A-P-L-A-N. Dr. Kaplan, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, and thanks for joining us. I I was uh, intrigued by this piece that you published uh, that frankenfish, this genetically modified salmon, is uh, less of a less of something for us to be afraid of than a McRib sandwich from McDonald's because the McRib sandwich is, you know, full of sodium and fats and awful things and uh, with which I totally agree. But uh, I was surprised that you would say that something that has been modified in a way that our species did not evolve to interact with would be a good thing. I don't get that. Yeah, well, you know, part of the reason I got angry enough to write a column about this was that the uh, fish and the McRib appeared in the same week. McDonald's brought the McRib back uh, last week. There are about uh, 46 million people that eat at McDonald's once a day. Um, I know a lot of people want to get worked up about the uh, genetically engineered salmon, which is the fish that the FDA approved last week, but really... If you look at food safety, if you look at the impact of what we're eating on American health, you got a lot more to do at the drive-through than you do with a uh, genetically altered fish that's supposed to grow faster. But isn't that a little bit like saying, well, you know, the guy next door is, uh, you know, beating his wife, but, you know, they're killing people over in Syria right now, so I guess <laughs> I'll ignore that. No, I actually think the fish has some value, growing it faster, making it cheaper, would put more fish in our mouths. I'm not worried about the safety of eating genetically modified fish. It's the genetic change that's done to make it grow a little faster. Pretty trivial. Involves it's it's altering the levels of growth hormone. Well, it, it does, but they're there naturally, and you're taking growth hormone genes from a related salmon, a Chinook, and putting it into uh, this Atlantic salmon. So why and, not breed them the way that you know Gregor Mendel back in the 15th yeah. century, if I recall correctly, uh, you know, showed us not how to do, but, you know, chronicled with with uh, peas, is, if I remember. I mean, it's been a long time since <laughs> it's been 30 years, 40 years since I took well, that biology do, class. It's, but it's, it's true. We do have this image of Gregor the monk out in the uh, garden, sort of slowly crossbreeding his plants with bees. But, you know, the way the food industry for about the past 50 years has been making new plants and to some extent animals is radiating their genes. They, they put these things in front of radiation, look for mutations, and voila, comes the tangerine. Uh, voila, comes different breeds of apple. So it's not like we're using the old, let's wait seven generations in well, the garden. Well, and, th and that's my point. I mean, we're, we're looking at explosions of, of things that we don't understand. There's, you know, uh, there's an, ex an explosion right now in autism. There's an explosion in obesity. Mm -hmm. There's an explosion in, in uh, you know, a whole series of different physical, psychological disorders that nobody is able to clearly understand or explain. And yet at the same time, we're saying, well, you know, we think you know, it's just fine if the big corporations that want to make money by feeding us uh, do so by genetically modifying our foods. I, I, uh, let me jump in on one, one thing. I think we do understand one of those ones you mentioned, and that's obesity. And what's happening is we're getting swamped with sugar and fructose. We're all at the fast food lines. The diet stinks. If you can make fish cheaper and put it on more plates, even with the genetic modification, which I said doesn't freak me out too much. I think it's a minor tweak. I guess I'm there. I'm, I'm but, cool. but again, I think you're, you know, that's the, that's the false equivalence of the guy next door beating his wife, but, you know, they're, they're killing people in Syria. I, it's, it, it still is the, this well, like, question it, it, of it, do you it, really want an industry – that that is modifying things like this, you know, this genetically modifying things. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know this the story of Klebsiella planicola. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this it, it, just just to recap real very quickly. Klebsiella planicola was was a uh, uh, a uh, it's a bacteria that exists in the roots of virtually every plant on Earth, and this company genetically modified it to convert 
uh, cellulose into ethanol, thinking that, you know, hey, we'll solve the problem of the leftover wheat after wheat is harvested. And, you know, all this extra cellulose will be able to produce ethanol for the world. And it almost got into the wild. And if it had, if it wasn't for this this one, uh, you know, Ph.D. student up in, in Oregon, as I recall, um, discovering that this stuff killed every plant that it attached right. itself to by alcohol right. poisoning, it could have ended all plant life on Earth, which would mean that we'd be dead. And this was just 20 years ago. Right. Well, let me let me jump in. Here's uh, I'll give you the uh, how I'll get out of the uh, gosh, you know, beating my wife leads to it in that bad because of Syria kind of analogy. Thank you. I think genetically modified food can be green, can be nutritious. What's happened is big corporations have used it to make it compatible with their herbicides and their pesticides. That's what Monsanto did over the years. It's right. the wrong way to go. The reason I like this GM fish is I think it's safe genetic engineering. It's good for nutrition. It's good in terms of being burdensome on the environment to grow the fish. So you're right. We do have to watch about where so, we So can I, may, may I make an analogy that is sort of like your, your one that I knocked down, and you, you're free to knock this one down, but um, <laughs> you know when, when, the, when we developed the bomb in the 40s, the Department of Energy was created – in large part because you had a whole bunch of scientists, and I don't know if you ever read the biography of Teller, but um, yeah. uh -huh. you know who felt yeah. just insanely guilty about having created a yes. weapon that killed a million people or half a million people, whatever it was, in, in these two cities in Japan. And they thought they could redeem themselves with nuclear power. And now, you know, we've got nuclear power that, you know, look at what's happened in Fukushima. I mean, it's a pox upon the planet. Should we, aren't there some technologies? And in my mind, nuclear energy certainly just nuclear. Period is one of them. Mm -hmm. And 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 in my mind, genetically engineering things in ways that don't comport with normal evolutionary processes, even bottle, even Stephen Jay Gould types of evolutionary processes, mm -hmm. driven evolution that mm -hmm. don't comport with that, aren't those technologies that we should simply say that's a box that we're not going to open, Miss Pandora? I'm going to say no. Because I think we can control the GM technology, take the world and its 9 billion people, feed them, use it, as long as we hold it accountable to, you've got to make me more nutritious food, you've got to make me food that puts less burden on the environment. But doesn't the your example of McDonald's work, prove that that's not possible? I mean, McDonald's is... Companies uh, but, trying to use it to, you know, continue to advance their old agriculture built on... Uh, pollution that's destroying the land. This thing gives us a way out. I think we should think but, about. Taking but doesn't it. doesn't McDonald's prove the opposite? I mean, you said you know, okay, we're gonna you know we want people to behave in a responsible fashion, and yet they're literally cutting down the rainforests to grow yeah. beef to for I don't know if it's specifically for McDonald's, but for the fast food industry in the United States, and it's destroying the lungs of our planet. And that's not even GMO. You're, you're, you're expecting the, these big GMO companies to behave ethically when just a fast food chain can't? Well, I'm going to say, to get your approval, let's set the standards. Show me that it's green. Show me that it's nutritious. Show me that it's, it's going to lessen the burden on the environment. Then you get approved. You just show me you're going to destroy more jungle or you're going to pour more pesticide on your soybeans. What do I need with that? That's yeah. just profiteering. Well, I, I get it. I just, I just it, respectfully, I think you're speaking like the the proponents, the well-intentioned proponents of nuclear power were in the 50s and 60s. Well, nuclear power, I think, you know, in its way, not so well understood. Yeah. Engineering a fish gene, better understood. I'm not worried about it running amok. What I think we can do, though, is feed the planet. And that's probably our biggest moral duty as we look at where we're going now. Yeah, or or maybe look at the the fact that we can best reduce population by empowering women. <laughs> I don't know. We could go all all kinds of places with this. Dr. Arthur Kaplan, thank you so much for being with hey, us. Hey, my sir. pleasure. Great talking.